Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Gospel Lighthouse program. It's our privilege each week at this time to present to you the unique music and ministry of Pastor J.C. Hibbard and the members of the new Gospel Lighthouse Church, located West Illinois at Loop 12, Walton Walker Boulevard. Pastor Hibbard extends a cordial invitation to you and the viewing audience to attend all services. If you have a problem or request that needs prayer, send it where dedicated Christians meet Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 12 noon. And now we invite you to join us as we worship together. This is Brother Hibbard, pastor of the Gospel Lighthouse Church, located here in the city of Dallas at West Illinois at Loop 12. Easy found. Anywhere in the city of Dallas, get on Loop 12 and come on around to the west side, overlooking Mountain Creek Lake, and you'll be able to see the church right there on the corner. And say to our many friends in Arlington and in Grand Prairie and over by Fort Worth, uh, coming uh, in through the new bridge that crosses Mountain Creek Lake. They just finished it just a week or so ago. You can come right across that bridge and when you get off of the Oak Cliff side on that bridge, you're just about, oh, three minutes from the church. So just come right on over to Spur 408 and turn north. That's to your left as you come. And in just a very few minutes, you can be right where it says exit to Illinois, and you can be right there on the corner, West Illinois, Loop 12. And anywhere in the city, it's easy found from Fort Worth, you can come over anywhere in North Dallas, come right on around, and it's very easy found. And folk, be sure, you can't be there this morning, it's already history, I wish you could have been there, but uh, be sure to come tonight at 6 o'clock. Now, we have good music, if you like good music, I think we have one of the best orchestras in the country. And uh, they, they'll really be a blessing to you. We have quartets, and I'll guarantee you'll enjoy them. We have solos, duets, and trios. Well, we have different singers. And then we preach the good old-fashioned Bible. It's where you see God in action, where folk receive the Holy Spirit, where people are healed in their sick bodies, and where people come and are, that are backslid and get back to God. No matter what your needs are, God is there to meet the need, because every day at 10 o'clock, we have regular church service. The crowds come in, and while we're praying for the hundreds of requests that comes in daily from everywhere, we always remember to pray for our Sunday services that God will bless them. And we're going to have a great time. Tonight at 6 o'clock, beginning sharp at 6, we start, and then we can have our service and get out. It's plenty of light. You can still get home before dark. So be sure to come. West Illinois at Loop 12, the new Gospel Lighthouse Church, and you owe it to yourself have to come and be in the service tonight. I'll be speaking and bringing the evangelistic message. Now we have Brad getting ready to sing for you, and I know you'll enjoy it. Brad, give him that number at this time. is whiter than snow I can say that I know it's so because Jesus did it for me take a lot that's been broken by sin Jesus blood can mend it again he'll give you joy that will never ring because Jesus did it for me Jesus did it for me well I'm so glad Jesus did it for me and if you're by set you free because Jesus did it for me and what he said in his word it is true anything in his name he will do and I know that he'll do it for you because Jesus did it for me I know without a doubt Jesus blood can bring you out he'll give you something to shout about because Jesus did it for me sin and strive. Write your name in the book of life because Jesus did it for me. Jesus did it for me. Well, I'm so glad Jesus did it for me. And if you're blind, he wants to set you free because Jesus did it for me. Oh, what he said in his word it is true and anything in his name he will do and I know that he'll do it 
it for you because Jesus did it for me. Jesus did it for me. Well, I'm so glad Jesus did it for me. And if your body wants to set you free because Jesus did it for me. Oh, what he said. In his word it is true and anything in his name he will do. And I know that he'll do it for you because Jesus did it for me. And I know that he'll do it for you because Jesus, he did it for me. Thank you, Brad, for that good song. And Jesus will give you a real born-again experience if you'll just invite him and let him because he wants to save you. I have a poem that I think is a thought-provoking one entitled, If Jesus Came to Your House. If Jesus came to your house to spend a day or two, if he came unexpectedly, Mm, I wonder what you'd do. Oh, I know you'd give your nicest room to such an honored guest. And all the food you'd serve to him would be the very best. Uh, would you keep assuring him you're glad to have him there? That serving Christ in your own home is joy beyond compare? But when you saw him coming, would you meet him at the door with arms outstretched and welcome to your heavenly visitor? Or would you have to change your clothes before you let Christ in? Or hide some magazines and put them, the Bible there where they'd been? Would you turn off the radio and the TV and, ooh, you hoped he hadn't heard and how you wish you hadn't uttered that last loud hasty word. Would you hide your world in music and put some hymn books out? Could you let Jesus walk right in or would you have to rush about? And I wonder if the Savior spent a day or two with you, would you go right on doing the things you always do? Would you keep right on saying the things you always say? Would life for you continue as it does from day to day? Would your family conversation keep up its usual pace? Would you find it hard each meal to say a table grace? Would you sing the songs you always sing and read the books you read and let Jesus know the things on which your mind and spirit feed? Would you take Jesus with you everywhere you'd plan to go? Or would you maybe uh, change your plans for just a day or so? Would you be glad to have him meet your very closest friends? Ooh... Or would you hope they'd stay away until Christ's visit ends? Would you be glad to have him stay forever and ever, on and on? Or would you uh, sigh with great relief when Christ at last was gone? It might be interesting to know the things that you would do if Jesus Christ in person came to spend some time with you. Think it over. Did it ever occur to you, even though you can't see him in person? If you're a born-again child of God, Jesus lives on the inside, and he knows your thoughts before you say them. So if you realize that you're a born-again child of God, then if his laws are written on the fleshly tables of your heart, You'll have no problems because one of these days Jesus is coming and he's coming for those who are the called, the chosen, and the faithful. And what a wonderful thing it is to be ready. Now, Brother Hubert has a message on knowing who you are. All right. Thank you, Sister Hubert. I have a portion of scripture here that we want to read in Acts, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse, reading just a few verses here. And uh, Peter went up, Peter and John went up together at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, he was lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, 
to ask alms of them entering into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms? Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he, the man gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something, expect to receive an offering. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. And the man leaped and walked and went about praising God. And it caused a great commotion. Several thousand people were converted that day because of this wonderful miracle of the man that was deformed, deformed from his mother's womb. He was a 38-year-old man. They had laid him there for many, many years at the gate, beautiful, and he begged for his offering. Now, he was there crippled. His legs were twisted and deformed, and from a child, from a baby, he was crippled. Now, Jesus Christ himself had walked in through that gate beautiful, no doubt, well over a hundred times, and since Peter and John went with him day by day for about three years, Peter and John walked in together with Jesus past this man who lay there on a pillar with his legs all twisted and deformed. Jesus walked right by him, performed other great miracles everywhere. I can imagine the man himself. He wondered, this man that walks upon the water and cleanses the leper and raises the dead and, and opens the eyes of the blind, Maybe he wondered why God couldn't through him heal me. But then I imagine he said, well, it'd be impossible because I couldn't walk. I don't have no legs to walk on. My legs are, have never developed. They're twisted. They're deformed. And uh, I guess he figured, well, uh, that's the reason why Jesus had never tried. Now, Christ could have performed that miracle. Why didn't he? There's a lot of people Many, many lepers in that day that Jesus never healed all, but the ones that came to him, he healed. And the multitudes by the day were healed. But this man at the gate beautiful lay there. Now, after Jesus was crucified and buried and resurrected, stayed here 40 days and went to heaven, after that, Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost and had power. And he remembered what the Lord told him. You see, the Lord told Peter, he said, now, Peter, not only will this work for you, son, but it'll work for anyone else that believes on me. It'll work for them. The works that I do, he can do also. And he says this in John 14 and 12. He said, the works that I do shall he, not just you, but shall he do. And greater works than these shall he do because I go to the Father. If I don't go to the Father, you can't do it. And it'll be impossible. But if I go to the Father, then you can do the works that I do and greater. Why? Because he said, Jesus said himself, if I go not away to the Father, you won't receive the Holy Spirit. He's with you, but he's not in you. But if I go to the Father, I'll pray the Father and he'll send you another comfort and he'll come and he'll abide in. And Acts 1.8, when the Holy Spirit comes in, you shall receive power that you never had before. It will be power from another planet. It'll be a power from heaven. Jesus in Luke made these state, this statement. He said, you shall be endued with power from on high when you receive the Holy Spirit. Go and tarry in the upper room until you be endued with power. Now notice, this power wasn't just to set down each oatmeal of a the morning. They could do that before the Holy Ghost ever came. And this Holy Ghost wasn't just to get a blessing. Well, they got blessings before that. But what was it for? He tells them. He said, so you can go out and the same things that I do shall you do also. Now, Peter believed it. And so he saw this man at the gate, and Jesus had told Peter these words. He said, Peter, if you doubt not in your heart, but believe that whatever you say, it shall come to pass. He said, Peter, 
He said, yes, Lord. He said, now, son, you, you see, if you say in your heart, and you don't doubt, you don't doubt in your heart, but, but say to this mountain, mountain move to yonder place, and said, it'll move. That is, if you don't doubt, but believe that what you say. When you believe it, there's no doubt, and you speak it, you can say to that mountain. Or, he said, you see this big sycamore tree here? He said, you can say to this tree, tree, be plucked up by the roots and cast in the sea. He said, don't doubt, but believe in your heart, it'll be so. That tree will come up with the roots, it'll go into the sea. Not only that, the third thing, he said, nothing shall be impossible for you, Peter. And not only you, but any other believer that I have that, is, that has accepted me and been filled with a power from another planet, which is the Holy Spirit, you shall receive power, said Acts 1.8, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you. Was that for the twelve? Uh, he never said anything about twelve. He said to everyone that went to the upper room, 120. Then what else did he say? He said, anybody that ever hears this gospel and believes it, these signs shall follow them. You say, he, 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 he didn't say that, did he? Oh, he, he, he did. <laughs> Let me read it to you. Over here in Mark, uh, the 16th chapter. Jesus, this is his own words. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You see, he's just getting ready to go to heaven. After he gets through quoting this scripture to, I'm not quoting the scripture, after he gets through speaking, it becomes scripture when he quoted it, or when he, read, or when he uh, spoke it. But he's now getting ready to go to heaven. When he gets through talking, he's going to go right straight into heaven. The last words on earth he ever speaks. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized in the Holy Ghost. Uh, he that believeth and is baptized in water shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. Now, he's speaking here of the water as water baptism. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Seventeenth verse, notice. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Now, let's analyze it for a minute. Who's the signs to follow? The twelve? No. They are the ones to do the preaching of the gospel. They and all the rest of the preachers, by the millions of them, that will be going after. He said when they get up and preach the gospel, these signs shall follow them that believe the gospel. Now you read in your Bible and see if it doesn't say that. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they. Now who are they? It's the ones that have the gospel preached to them and they believe it. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils and they shall speak with new tongues. And it goes on to say, and they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Many, many signs, but he definitely tells that they have power over sickness. Now, Jesus called the twelve to him after he had been here for a good while, and the Holy Ghost hadn't come yet. He was still here on earth. The Holy Spirit wasn't given until Christ ascended into heaven. But Christ called the twelve to him and said, Now, boys, I want to give you power. You can't cast out devils now like it is, and you can't heal the sick. But I want to give you power, and when I give you power, you'll go out and cast out devils and heal all manners of sickness. When you pray for them, it's the power of God that I deputize you with that you'll be able to do, get the job done. So he gave the twelve power over all unclean spirits to cast them out and heal the sick. Then he called the seventy, did the same thing to them. Now, they were operating with a power that could cast out devils. Why? Because Christ gave it to them. That's what you find in your Bible. Now, Jesus said, when I go to heaven, then I am going to let them preach the gospel, and they shall go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to the end of the world for witness unto all nations, then the end shall come. And right up to the very end, when they preach it, if they believe it, these signs follow the believers. That's why that hundreds of thousands of demons have been cast out of people in the last few years. And that's the reason why today many people have devils cast out of them. 
They're cast out in the name of Jesus. Why? Because if you preach the gospel, you cannot preach the gospel without expecting people to believe it. And if they believe it, the signs will follow them. And what are the signs? The signs are they'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. You see, all right, goes on to say if they take up serpents, it doesn't mean from the handle them. It means if they should be bitten, that God will give them divine protection. If they drink anything, someone try to poison them, God will give them divine protection. Didn't say try to do it. They never used the uh, poison to convince the, gain, uh, the, the people or the unbelievers because it meant that if they tried to harm you, I'll give you divine protection. These signs are following the believers when the gospel is preached. Now, the gospel is to be preached to the end of the world. Now, that is the promise for you. Now, do you know the authority you have? I'm coming back knowing what you have. Being able to watch out. Peter went up to this man at the gate beautiful. Jesus had told him that whatever he said and didn't doubt, it had be done. Now he believed the Lord because the Lord had gone into heaven. He knew the Lord told it to him. So he went up to this man at the gate beautiful. He'd never walked in his life. And he said to him, silver and gold have none, but such as I have, give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. Now notice very carefully. He said, such as I have. He knew what he had and he used it. Now, did he think it was his own power that healed the man? No. He explains it very clearly. Let me uh, turn right here real quick and I'll read it to you where he straightened it out very clear. Peter, in the 12th verse here, Peter said, uh, Peter saw uh, and he answered the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this miracle? Why look on us so earnestly uh, as though by our own power or our own holiness we have made this man walk? Now, why do you look on us as though it was our power or our holiness? It wasn't. Now, here he tells him how he done it. He said, here's how that this man is, uh, is able to walk. Uh, said, you kill the prince of peace, whom God raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses, and his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom you now see and know, yea, the faith which is by him hath made this man and given him perfect soundness. Now, how was he healed? Not by the faith and holiness of Peter. It was his name through faith in his name. But he realized that he had authority to operate upon that name. He said in the name of Jesus. He didn't say in the name of Peter or because of my personal faith. He said in the name of Christ, rise and walk. He knew what he had. You know, uh, uh, to make it clear to you, there was a young fellow named uh, uh, Brother Allen, uh, Galen Allen. Many people know him. He's been on this television program and, and he's well known throughout the country. He's a little you know, kind of timid in some things. But he was preaching in a little country town up here in West Texas. And during this revival, they brought a man with a devil. He had a real devil, man. He was just, you know, how he was just having a time. And they brought him in and it kind of frightened Galen a little bit because he had never kind of dealt with things like that, you know. And uh, so finally they, they brought him up there and Galen had to go out and minister to the fellow and cast the devil out of him, you know. And when he got up there, Galen uh, kind of caught a deep breath and he, he said, uh, uh, I command you to come out in the name of Jesus. And when he said... Galen didn't quite understand too much about those things, you know. He hadn't had too much experience. And the devil, now uh, don't you think a, ma a man that has a devil, the devil can't talk through his mouth because he can. They talk through a man's mouth that, and the man didn't talk to Jesus, but the devil talked through to Christ. And many times we in our experience have had people that had demons in them and the demon would speak through the mouth. And this demon spoke and said, what do you mean? Who are you to command me to come out? The devil was trying to put a fear in Galen Allen. And that's what he said to him. He said, who are you to try to command me to come out? And all at once, it was like an ice bucket poured all over him, a ice bucket of ice water. You know, it, it just kind of uh, frightened him for a second. But all at once, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, that power from on high, came all over Galen. And Galen, like a lion, roared back 
And he said, Satan, I'll tell you who I am. I'm a child of the living God, deputized with power and authority in the name of Jesus. And now, Satan, come out in the name of Jesus. And when he did, the devil loosened and came out of the man, and the man was loose and set free. Now, for a while, he wondered what he had. But oh, when the power of the Holy Ghost began to quicken him, he realized who he was. He was a child of God. He had received the Holy Ghost. You should be endued with power from on high after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And I'm thinking right now, how many people in Radio Land, you'll say, Brother Herbert, I've accepted Jesus and I'm a believer of the gospel. All right, do you believe what Jesus said? I'm not talking about what some preacher said, what Christ said. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. I preach, and when I preach, you hear it, and you believe it. Who does the signs follow? These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. In my name, they shall speak with new tongues, and they shall pick up serpents, or they shall drink any deadly thing, or they shall lay hands on the sick. And as I said a moment ago, we don't believe in handling snakes. I believe if it did, I'd get bitten at tempting God. But that's foolish. We know what he means is there in his name we have divine protection in this old life. Now, the point is this. Why must we not wake up to what we are, who we are, and what authority we have? Peter said, such as I have, give I thee. He was not coming from a prayer meeting, he was going to a prayer meeting here in the third chapter of Acts and the Spirit of God moved upon him. Now, that's why Jesus said, if I go not away to heaven, then the Holy Ghost won't come. But if I go to heaven, I'll send the Holy Ghost and the works that I do shall you do also. Now this promise is not just to the twelve, it's to every one of his believers. The works that I do shall you do also. Why? Because I go to the Father. Now I hope you enjoy this. I want you to know your authority. As a believer we have the authority. We're deputized the same as Christ deputized the twelve to lay hands on the sick. We can pray the prayer of faith. We can ask God for miracles. We can believe God for things. Why? Because we are believers and that promise is to the believer. Now, Heavenly Father, we pray to let these words sink into their heart and give them the assurance of who they are and what they can do for Jesus' sake. Now, friend, don't forget, we want you to come out and be with us tonight beginning at 6. Tell your neighbor, your friend. We pray for people. Miracles are performed all the time. And we'll be glad to be with you tonight at the Gospel Lighthouse. Until next Sunday, goodbye. God bless you. This concludes another Gospel Lighthouse program presented by Pastor Hibbert and the members of the beautiful Gospel Lighthouse Church at West Illinois at Loop 12, Walton Walker Boulevard, here in Dallas, Texas. These telecasts are viewed each week at this same time. If you have enjoyed this telecast, let Pastor Hibbert hear from you this week. And if you have a problem or request that needs prayer, send it where dedicated Christians meet Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. till 12 noon to seek the Lord concerning hundreds of prayer requests received each week. Your offerings are tax deductible. Make all checks payable to Gospel Lighthouse Church in care of Pastor J.C. Hibbard, Box 210217, Dallas, Texas 75211.